What's up, everybody? Good to see you again. It's been a bit. I've been out gallivanting in nature, uh, taking some time away from technology. But as this astrological season descends upon us, the retrograding effect that is occurring that began uh, at the end of April with Pluto and then the Mercury retrograde and now Saturn is kicking back into gear some of the things that we've been working on, some of the things that we've experienced in the past few years. Now, specifically, what I'm going to talk about today is the aspect of Saturn squaring Uranus. If at any time during this video you have questions for me, uh, comments or anything, just post them and if I get to them, I will answer them and likely I will because uh, I'm staring directly at the screen where they will pop up. But the themes of the Saturn-Uranus square um, were the heaviest themes of the year 2021. Um, and they had to do with power struggles. Uh, they had to do with individuals in positions of influence that were a little bit out of touch. They were making sweeping decisions, perhaps, for a large group of people. And when you do that, it's going to work out for some, right? But it's not going to work out for everyone. So as we move into the fall, um, there will be a final, not exactitude of this transit, but very close. It will come within a half a degree. You don't need to know what that means, but just understand that means the energy is back. So right around the uh, midterm elections, if you will, I think that's how it plays out here in America. Um, but nothing to worry about on a personal level that you haven't faced before. But the intensity the depth and the specificity of the issues you faced personally in 2021 may be ratcheted up. So that means anything you were working on that you didn't quite get to the bottom of or can still use refinement is going to be asked for those things, refinement, energy, and focus. So what happened in 2021? Um, that's the end of my video. <laughs> what the hell happened? In 20 well, what happened was a lot of legislative power moves, um, seemingly obstructions of movement, you know, blockages, energy pushing against it, things breaking. The point being, we're getting into more of the details from last year. So whether you like it or not, <laughs> something like COVID is going to be an issue, maybe not specifically the way that it was. Again, we're on the positive side of this thing, but the topics and issues that were brought up around that, whether it's respecting other people's spaces or uh, like understanding what it means to actually be healthy, um, what, what does it take for an individual to feel healthy and to feel safe? Because that's different for all of us, right? And you can see how topics like that allow us to engage boundaries. And when you see Saturn squaring Uranus, boundaries. You want to really consider where you may have overstepped or where you may have let someone in. So as an example, this topic of, you know, breathing or health or like, you know, what's in my space? Is it safe? This is all very taboo boundaries, things that usually were not discussed. Um, until the, the most recent years. So as this flares up, it's very uncomfortable because people have, you know, they don't want to talk about things they don't want to talk about. And when you're sort of forced into it by the will of the universe, as it seems, or the whims of, you know, some magical, you know, beings in the sky, it can be pretty uncomfortable. So keep in mind that the amount of fighting and arguing that you invest in will determine the quality of your life. And while you can control what you get into, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you can't, you cannot control what others do. Even if you have the best ideas, even if you have the best information, it is not up to you to decide what others do. And so we live here in societies and communities where certain things might need to happen. Maybe at 10 p.m. it needs to be quiet time because your kids are sleeping or you need rest because you get up in the morning. 
that's a different level. That's like, please work with me. But you're not actually telling people what to do. So what we want in all situations on all sides is for people to do the thing that they want to do, or they're at least willing to do. And so if individuals do not seek to do something that you think they should do, your best bet at that point is to be really nice. This is my experience, is to be kind, is to express where you're coming from and not ask them to do anything at all. Because again, Saturn Uranus in its worst expression is just forcing people to do stuff. It's, for lack of a better term, it's, it's slavery. It's, it's, it's a oligarch with these incredible ideals forcing them on other people. And when you do that, you're not going to have a very happy population. You, you cannot simultaneously claim to care about the welfare of people and force them to do certain things. Now, if we don't have faith in people, this can get very ugly. If we don't believe in each other, if we think that other people are enemies, then what do we expect of them? We expect them to fuck with us. We expect them to ruin us, to, to, to bother us. And I urge you to fight that. It may be an instinct or it may be informed uh, knowledge to think that other people are an enemy. But I urge you to work with that and to find faith in other people. And if you find that there are areas where you just can't, you should stay out of those areas because they're not feeding you. They're, they might be hurting you. And inevitably, if you're being hurt, you will hurt the other people. I'm going to take just a short break. We're going to come right back to these topics. But to recap, the Saturn Uranus square requires us to be tactful and requires us to take time and consider what we are doing so that we don't go overboard with things. So it may feel like a bit of a freeze. That's the Saturn aspect of it. And then Uranus is the go forward. But we, we can't move forward unless we take our time and consider what we're working with. They said, today I had an important interview with a discrimination case. It makes sense with the energy. Yes, and it may be that this case goes on throughout the summer and into the fall. But you're bringing up another topic. And thank you for helping me with uh, Liliana. Thank you for helping me with this pivot. Uh, some of the issues that came up. We're not r related to, you know, the pandemic or whatever, however you want to refer to it, however you viewed it or experienced it. I have no judgment of that. There are billions of people on this planet. I love you and I hope you feel safe in whatever you're doing. Please take the measures that make you feel safe and love yourself. But the other issues that came up have to do with discrimination, have to do with, you know, it, there was a Black Lives Matter movement. And regardless of what you think about the movement itself and it's where it came from, there are clearly issues of discrimination and problematic types that have proliferated in certain communities uh, within our country and probably all over the world. So it's not a terrible thing to consider, to talk about. But do you have to feel like a terrible person because your ancestors did something? I would say no. I think that would be Uranus going a little bit too far with it. Do you have to just stop yourself and suffer because you are in a privileged position, again, I would say no. I think that's Saturn going a little bit too far. I think that one's saying, if I suffer, then others will do better. And it just doesn't work like that. And right before I got on this video, I'm like ready to do this. And I look out the window and I see Krista coming home. And she has this little story for me. And I know right before my video, she's always going to download something to me. And the gist of what she shared with me, because I'm wondering... How can we do this better this time? This is our, it's not our last chance, but it's the final chance of this go round with Saturn and Uranus. Saturn lessons stay with us and Uranian upgrades, they change the world. So what are we looking for? What can we get out of this? Because I got to say last year, we didn't really get it for sure. We didn't get it. I can say that as a fact, but we did understand the framework. Do I want to fight with people? Do I want to argue with people, especially over technology? They're going to be very stubborn. Saturn, Uranus, Saturn, Uranus. Remember, on this kind of platform, you're not talking sense to people. You're just talking. And if that's what you want, then do it. But you're not talking sense into people. So to come back to center, if 
those who are in a position of influence, and this could be as small as the mom in the house who's telling the kids what to do, or it could be as big as the president making some sort of mandate. These people who are in positions of influence are feeling this pressure the most. They are feeling like, I have, I have to do a lot, but they're also feeling like, it's, it's all me. Like, I can make the decision. It's, it's hard to balance this energy. Anyone who has this in their natal chart, very interesting aspect to have. I'd be interested in talking to you. Saturn square Uranus. Or Saturn Uranus uh, aspects. Um, message me if you know your chart and that's something. I'd love to talk about it. But these individuals are under far too much pressure. And reluctantly, what they are asking for, and maybe passively, because nobody wants to show any weakness when they're in a position like that because you feel incredibly sensitive. Your sensitivities and your defensiveness is heightened when Saturn is squaring your honest. Let's keep that in mind throughout the summer into the fall. But when you're in that position and it's all eyes on you and you have to make decisions, you are likely to make poorly informed decisions because you are not receiving in that state. There's, when, when you feel this defensiveness, your body, and this is something that happens when people have PTSD and they're in a trauma state, their body doesn't receive because what they've been taught from their experience is that when they receive, it's painful, it's hurtful, it leaves scars, it leaves trauma. So not only is trauma waking up, people are feeling traumatized, but basically the gist that I want to get across to you is they're not receiving. So when people aren't in a receptive state, um, let's say you have a partnership, a marriage, a relationship, and you're trying to have sex. You're trying to make love, you're trying to get down. If someone is defensive and they are feeling traumatized, they're not gonna wanna have sex with you because they're not gonna be open. They're not gonna be able to receive from you. They might be able to give, but they're not gonna be able to receive. So what do you do? You give them, you give them a back rub? Do you feed them chocolate? Do you use an aphrodisiac? My metaphor, while highly, highly sexually charged, is actually an apt one for what's happening in society. If you notice that people are closed, if you notice that people are stuck, think of them as a partner that you want to love. You want to give them love. And they're gonna fucking take it. No. <laughs> take my love. But we have to caress them. We have to be kind to them. And if we look at people and we just don't like them and we don't want to be kind to them, then we're best off just stepping away. If we can't change the way we approach, if we can't come with love, then it's just not going to work. It's like being someone's just like rattling your cage. Like I put myself in a cage for a reason to protect myself from you. Don't try to come in here. But what you would like to do is see them come out of this cage to feel safe enough to interact with you. Now, as I said, I'm still getting to the point that Krista shared with me. Um, as I said, sensitivities are heightened during this time, especially insecurities. Insecurities you didn't even know you fucking had. It's just like, whoa, whoa. That's a lot of comparison and, you know, your honest rules. It's like social media and this like new technology. So like, there is something that'll happen if you look far enough on any feed on whether it's TikTok or it's Instagram or it's Twitter, there's going to be something where you say, oh, well, fuck, like I'm not enough or, oh, that doesn't feel good. And point being, sensitivities are engaged. How do we make each other feel safe? And I'm not talking about manipulating. I'm talking about spreading goodwill and cheer, being in Santa Claus. <laughs> If I see you do something that I think is awesome, like taking care of yourself, I'll tell you. It's like, uh, what an aha moment, right? You're doing good. And even if they say, well, it doesn't feel like it, it's like, oh, that's fine. Like, I, I feel that way too. And then you're forming a connection. This is all honesty. This is not about manipulation or anything like that. Like, I, I have a goal and I will tell you what it is. I want you to feel good. I want you to feel open. And I want you to feel safe. And if that's a problem for you, then maybe you don't want to hang out with me. Okay? But be upfront. Share with people. Lead with the part that you are asking them to bring forward. Your heart. Your openness. Your thoughtfulness. So 
I hope this was helping and offering something. And if you're watching on replay, uh, still feel free to comment, like, share, do whatever. Um, I'll come back to the comments when I see them. <sighs> but the key here, as we move forward, I talk about these people in positions of influence. It's a little bit too much for them, okay? They're doing their best, but we're not going to talk about how you get into power in the world. <laughs> so then you imagine people like that are now under intense pressure and there's a big ego inflammation that is necessary to take on that kind of energy so people can get out of hand. The point here is that if something is going to change and needs to change, which sometimes it does, whether you like it or not, whether it's policy, whether it's government, whether it's the way that the roads work or the weather happens and you know what, what people are allowed to do because there's always rules, people love rules, makes them feel safe. Regardless of those being defined and designed, you can offer input. And if you do not offer input, and I'm not talking about voting, okay? You should do, if you feel like that works and you wanna vote, you should vote. And if not, hey, I don't judge you, that's your life. But speaking up is far more powerful than doing one thing every two years. And when we can share with the people who are in positions of influence, and sometimes that happens again in a community, in a workplace, I don't want you to think about the bigger picture too much in this situation because that's kind of going to change from what we do here, what we do with our partner, what we do with our kids, the way we talk to them, we do, how we treat our pets. We're showing the universe and we're showing others what we need at that time. So as things begin, it's feeling more and more like a protest year, um, <laughs> more and more protests. But what I would advocate for, because a protest doesn't make anyone want to open up, you know, someone, someone violently with signs being like, fuck you, idiot. It's like, oh, fuck you. Fuck you too. I'm not going to listen. But peaceful offerings of love and information with confidence changes the movement of generations. Like, what is one of the most impactful things that happened in the last 50 or 60 years? Uh, it was, um, like, Woodstock. Like, people getting together and, I don't know, they're, like, making love in the mud and, like, doing LSD and whatever. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you feel good and everybody's safe, enjoy yourself. This changes the world, okay? Typing something can influence someone, but... When you are in yourself and you're in your body, you're sensual, you're in your life, you're out exploring, you're telling people how you feel, as it comes up, that changes the world. And so I want you to keep that in mind, especially as we get into, again, we get into the midterm season and you don't have to worry about any of that, but you're in the world, so it's gonna be there, it's gonna be something, it's gonna be people who wanna be elected and this and that here in America. But just consider that the greatest impact you have is what you do with your time and how honest you are with people. And if you can hold that honesty, if you can say like, you know what? I know we talked about doing this, but I don't feel like it's right anymore. This makes me feel unsafe and I'd like to change it. And if you're not gonna change it, I'll take a little bit of space from you. Okay, see we're not asking anybody to do anything, but we are informing them of how they can value us if they choose to. And that doesn't mean they care or don't care about us if they don't do it. What it does mean is that we're giving them the opportunity to love us in the way that we would like to be loved. Through being honest, through being open, especially in the vulnerable parts, <laughs> we are giving people an opportunity to love us more deeply. We are putting out a roadmap for them to show up and take residence in our heart and to care about us. We are not robots. I mean, maybe some people are. I would never know. They're really good at making those things these days. <laughs> so, zoom back out. If you have anything that's happening that involves one person making decisions, you know, a judge, a, um, a parent, a head of a household, a landlord. What you want to do, because Saturn square you're on us, right? You don't want to push against authority. What you want to do is you want to gather your crew. You want to have your intentions set. You want to have an objective because these people, they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't, so they're, they're, they're going to be a little bit shifty. And you come to them as a group 
with a peaceful offering of honest expression, including this is what I will do if this happens, this is what I will do if this happens, this is what I think is just, this is what I think is unjust, and I think you should know that. This changes people. Most human beings, and there are always outliers, are not out here being like, selfish assholes. There's a lot of really good people in the world. The majority of human beings are incredibly gifted, talented, loving people. And those who aren't most likely just need some healing. But let's forget about them for now. <laughs> but the people who will be impacted by you will be impacted through that means. And that will come up more and more during this time that you will need to come together with the people, not necessarily that you agree with, but the people that you need to work with, which is very different. Because my if we live in a if I live in a building with a bunch of people, I might not agree with them at all on what they think. We have completely different backgrounds. But I do need to work with them because we're sharing a building. We're sharing a house. We're sharing water supply, electricity. You know, the smells and the sounds are all shared. So you want to figure out just how many people you really need to work with. Because I don't want anybody overextending themselves during this time. It's already been a rough couple of years. It does feel like we're coming out of it. We can be a little bit more peaceful. But we need to understand that we're not as effective if we don't have people that we work with. We, we, have, to do, we have to work with someone, okay? And if you're an outlier, you just live on your own. Like, peace to you. Have fun. But if you're in any sort of group, society, community, building, workplace... You gotta figure out who you can work with and how you can work with them. And every little compromise that you make is gonna bless your life, okay? And you'll learn, maybe you overcompromise and you're like, wait, 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 wait. That was too much. And you go back and you speak to these people and you say, I went a little bit too far. I'm not comfortable with this. These are all opportunities to communicate with each other in ways that will make us all stronger and make us more understanding, and will make us all feel safer at a base level. And so then, these surface level fears of like, are you breathing near me? Like, what's going on? They will start to just fade. Have you noticed that when people are in a good mood, and they're sharing and they're talking, they start to relax, they start to loosen up? Well, the exact opposite happens when people are at odds with one another. When people are arguing, and you're telling them that they're wrong and what you think, you're not going to convince anybody of anything. Live your life. Love yourself. Okay? Don't worry about them. Focus on what you are doing and how it affects you. <laughs> oh, man. So I urge you during this time to... Not look for the people who agree with you, okay? Look for the people who you can communicate with, regardless of ideology, regardless of agenda. You see where those common threads are, because this is how we weave together a network of living, intentional communities. The challenges that come in life and I'm pivoting here. Thank you for listening. The challenges that come in life are tremendous. Sometimes I kind of wish for the time before I started thinking about all of these things, about like being a soul and maybe living more than once. And until I was about 30, I never considered any of this stuff. And then something in my brain cracked or something. <laughs> but it, it's amazing that we have so much opportunity to work through challenging situations when honestly, I think in my heart of hearts, I'd prefer to not have to work through anything challenging. I just want to exist. I just want to enjoy existence. And I realized that my body is a gift and I'm here. I know you're all wondering. <laughs> I've decided that I'm gonna make the best of it. And when I do, expire from this physical existence and I don't know when that will be I will move on to all the other stuff that's not in my face and on earth when I'm here I'm, I meditate you know 
I pray, I talk to things, I go out in nature and just stare at the stars and wonder what is going on, like why do I exist? But I don't need to wonder about that because I do, I do exist. And the things that are pressing to me, the things that you know, make, make you rise inside and say, oh, I want that or I don't want that, those are your key signs. Those are your indicators of where you're going and, and where you can go next and where you might be coming from. But the future, as far as outside of this realm of existence, like unless you are constantly being bombarded with messages from other beings, from other dimensions, which does happen in my experience, um, stick to the basics. Feed yourself. Take care of the spaces around you. Keep them clean. Keep them organized. Okay. If people come to you regularly, they are your lovers. Okay. Even if they're agitators. They are loving you. They might be asking you to set boundaries. They might be asking you to offer them something. Maybe there's a gift, uh, but they may just be enjoying your company and you can enjoy theirs. I did a video yesterday about prioritizing the relationships that are peaceful and watching out for the ones that are agitating because that may just be a trauma and drama addiction, which does happen. We ain't perfect. We're always working on something, right? And in your day-to-day, -day, everyone you run into, if you're in a workplace, all the people there, those are important people in your life, okay? You can treat them as such. If you, if you live in a house and you stay at home, you take care of people and your family, those are the people. Treat them with love. Treat them with kindness. Give them opportunities to be free from your influence. You don't control anyone. Your, your partner, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your whatever, you don't control them. Let them be free. You will get the best out of them. It will bring the best out of you. You're capable of this. It will change your entire reality to shift the fabric of your relationships. And sometimes it just takes that extra, that extra breath to say, I don't need to say this right now. Let me just listen. Let me see what's actually in this for me. And especially when you're in those triggered states and we're gonna get plenty plenty of opportunities to be in those triggered states <laughs> um, over the next, is it four to five months? Again, uh, the aspect I'm speaking about, Saturn, square Uranus, uh, has been reactivated, but its prime activation time will be September into November with uh, the beginning of October being like a kind of uh, takeoff point. So friction, yes. But what does friction do? I don't know. You ever tumble rocks? It makes them nice and shiny. Makes them look real nice. Um, but also, if you put the wrong materials in and there's friction, it can be combustible. So keep your head about you, you know. You're not going to tell anybody what to think. But the people around you are asking for leaps and bounds in your relationships, and they are very possible during this time. We have been working on something for the past year and a half, and now it's going to come to fruition. It will fruit just like a tree when you plant it. And you're like, oh, is that a blossom? And then you know you're going to get some fruit. We have blossomed, okay? The fruit is coming. So don't cut off the, the tree. Don't cut down the tree. Don't stop watering it. Keep watering it. Keep investing, okay? Things will, things will come back into some semblance of order, and it will be a newer order. Oh, that sounds so weird. Um, and it will improve something that's very important. But if we allow people to go unchecked and just making these changes because they have more money, that's problematic. So we do need to speak up. We do need to share what we think. And we do need to put people in positions of influence, if we can, that are trustworthy, which is perhaps the hardest puzzle I have ever expressed in a video. How do we put people of trustworthy, authentic, loyal, qualities into positions of influence. <laughs> I guess we're being told to, to shrink back onto ourselves, our little microcosms of the universe that are our bodies and our families and our homes. We are the fully trustworthy person to ourselves. Okay. And we have to start small. Maybe the stars can help. Maybe the stars make it harder, but isn't that just helping? Because it's sh we're sharpening our tools. Uh, I hope that's helpful. It is.
dog hot here in Arizona. The monsoon comes today or tomorrow. It hasn't rained since like March. Maybe even further back. So send your rains, if you have extra rain, if you're living in the Pacific Northwest, send them care of James Ray to Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I hope this was helpful for you. I'll post a couple of links uh, after I publish the video. And I wanna finish by talking about just, that's some long-term astrology that I was just talking about. Let's talk about some short-term. Um, da, 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 da. I gotta get my dates back. Okay, so we're currently uh, dealing with something that's been going on for a while, but it makes us a little myopic. Uh, you're welcome. Um, we're dealing with something where our vision is sort of inward and it's a little bit constricted. We're not able to see the big picture. This is something that's been going on since like mid April and it will continue to go. We thought we were out of the woods when Mercury, you know, started moving forward, but, um, then it went in retrograde. So we have about 10 days. Okay. And then we are out of the woods on this. So I, what I want you to consider over the next two weeks is your viewpoint may begin to change as your perspective broadens. Okay. And as you do that, do your best not to make any sort of like strong decisions about things because you're just taking in new information about topics and situations that you may feel like you have been studying for years, decades, or lifetimes. So over the next week or so, things start opening up, you start getting fresh perspective, let that breathe, okay? Because while you may feel like you learned something new, that new information needs to be integrated and that takes time. Um, so my advice for this current lunar cycle that we're in uh, is actually to take your time and not move too fast. Uh, in about four days, well, it'd be three days, uh, the end of Gemini comes and we moved into we move into Cancer, so there will be a shift there. Um, I think an overall softening is called for internally. Uh, there has been a lot of inner tension uh, that has been created, and maybe you have your ways of releasing that tension, and maybe you don't. Uh, keep doing those things. Uh, keep those up for the rest of your life. Uh, don't let things build up within you. But if we are to really galvanize ourselves and capitalize on the current energy, we do need to do a lot more research and be open to new things coming in. And I see us just not crawling out, but kind of like stumbling. It's like a tired energy. Uh, it's been, the sun has been very weighed down in its journeys. Um, I see us stumbling out of a cave or finishing an ascent up a mountain and finally seeing the peak and understanding that yeah, we can reach that. And, and maybe as we start to go back down, there's another peak and another peak, but we don't mind it up here. This isn't a bad place to be. Um, we have actually become fairly enlightened over the last few years with the challenges we have faced. And specifically in the last like two or three months, it feels like there's no air to breathe. It's kind of like stifling, um, but very, yeah, very tired. It, it's a, it's a weighted energy. So the sun continues to get further and further away from that weight. Um, but there's still some time between now and then there's still, I would expect the new moon, uh, which will come. Let's get an exact date here. Should know that one. The new moon that's on its way in. Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Uh, it will occur on the night of the 28th of June. So what's that? Uh, 11 days. Um, I see that as a point where you want to get some really good rest. Okay. Because there's still kind of an insular energy. A like, oh my God, that was so hard. Have you ever been in a situation where you, you just have to go into the bathroom to like get some alone time? You're just in there breathing. 
that's kind of the state we're in right now, like almost like there's no safe space. So I do warn you again, based on the early part of the video, consider those things. People are more agitated. They're more likely to attack you. And one little attack when we're sensitive can really drain us for a while. Okay, and we wanna keep our focus on ourselves because even if we're being attacked, we wanna keep ourselves safe. We wanna get out of that situation and we wanna replenish ourselves. And you'll find that at this new moon, your ability to regenerate self Remember, self before others, and that doesn't mean forget about others, that actually means serving others even better. We want to sit with ourselves and really nurture. I see, um, I always have a pillow that I put like between my knees and I kind of cuddle it when I sleep or at least when I'm first falling asleep. And that's the kind of thing I'm feeling. So if there is a place you can go or something you can set up for yourself, um, thank you. I would, I will happily trade you some rain for the sun up there in Seattle, uh, my friend, and I'll see you soon when you're back. You're coming back around the new moon, I believe I noticed. Um, but keep up on that self care, like duh. Um, but take your little cocoon time. Um, don't pop out fully just yet, but that's coming. Okay. I see good things. I see fun things coming. Um, but uh, we're leaning back into sort of old patterns like from last year. So if last year bothered you and you didn't come to a conclusion with it, if you're still picking sides instead of just kind of looking at the whole battle, um, it's maybe a troubling summer for you. It may be very uncomfortable leading into the fall. But if you've done the work, and I can say that confidently, if you've done the work of staying open not making any strong decisions about things, but understanding what you want, then you may find this time that you step out as more of a leader role. And remember, lead by example. Um, don't try to tell people what to do, just be yourself. And if people wanna know more about that, you let them know, you let them know how you're doing, how you're feeling. Um, so the moon, that is coming up is in a really good position, the new moon on the 28th, uh, 28th into the 29th. Um, relationship to Jupiter, this can have things either getting out of hands, or again, if we take the energy inward, this is a time to regenerate ourselves. The sun and Jupiter working together is just very, very good for the body when handled in the right way. Um, and when, if mishandled, you can really blow out your circuits. Um, Cat goat's gonna find a cave in the mountain. Yes. Uh, and in fact, on my recent, uh, my recent journey uh, to the Grand Canyon, I was praying to the bighorn sheep. I just fucking love them. And I always go where they live and I never see them, but they probably see me. Um, and I was just like, hey guys, I know you're here. Like, do you come say hi? And I creeped over this one rock pile. It's like, you know, rocks that are like 15 feet tall, tumbled into each other, you know, typical Grand Canyon landscape. And I climb over one and I peek over. This is probably what the goat saw or the ram. And this humongous, I was staring like right at his ass, very muscular. <laughs> and I see the fully formed horns, which means that they're fully developed. This is a male. And he looks back and he's like, oh, hell no. Like you, I am not getting this close to a human. And ran across this rock pile that took me probably 10 to 15 minutes to cover in like 30 seconds. And I was just like, that was so impressive. If you don't know this about me, I really enjoy watching sports because I enjoy watching people be very physically active and very agile, not so much baseball. Uh, that one's kind of boring because they're not really doing much. Um, but watching people like dancers athletically competing. So this was basically the best thing I've ever seen. And so I, I'm marching on, I'm saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I go back to the trailhead to get back to our camp. This is a way off route spot in the canyon. And right at the junction of the other trail, uh, my hiking partner, she says, dude, look up. And I look up at about 60 feet up uh, on this, you know, this rock steps and ledges that I, I no human being could climb it. There's a female ram standing there. And I said, hey, I've been looking for you, <laughs> you know, as one does. And she looks at me and her eyes get bigger. And my hiking partner says, hey, you know, these things can be aggressive. And you know me, I'm like, oh, that's fine. They like me, they know me. And then 
the ram jumps down a couple of steps. It was like 20 feet closer. It's still staring right at me. And so I stood behind these two little trees, <laughs> kind of still looking. And she came down a little bit further, still staring at me. And she charged for maybe like a step and then ran away. And I wasn't really scared because I was so excited and exhausted and hot. Um, but she was clearly delivering a message to me. And it was very lovely, so wonderful, such a beautiful experience with animals in nature. Um, and that's their space. That, that space belongs to them, as I always say about my home. I go out and do shit hours a day. My cats, they never leave this space. This is their spot. They should be on the lease. <laughs> they should be paying the mortgage. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had to share the Ram story. Uh, that medicine has been with me, and for eight consecutive nights after leaving the canyon, uh, every night the dreams were of being in the canyon and on game trails, because I, I know all the main trails that are there, and I think that I connected with them and was running with them, because um, it seemed really scary, like really sketchy trails on the sides of things, and I really do appreciate that. Um, and if I sound like a kooky, kooky monster, that's totally cool because maybe you don't connect with animals in this way or maybe you do and you understand and either way that's cool but never downplay the way that you can connect with nature and how profoundly it can impact you and affect you. It can change your life. Um, and there's no too late for anything, okay? Um, just start today or tomorrow or next week. Put it on your schedule. What's one thing that you want to do that maybe you haven't done before and you're excited to do it? Just, just do it. Just try it, okay? Uh, you're being supported in doing so. Um, we're here to live, okay? The last few years have taught us anything. We're here to live. That's why everybody tries not to die, because they want to live. Um, so don't let the negative get in front of the positive, which is the fact that you want to be alive. So uh, as <laughs> famous New Jersey <laughs> native John Bon Jovi once said, I just want to live while I'm alive. <laughs> Profound lyrics, right? Um, but yeah, do that. Go live. You have my permission. <laughs> but don't listen to me and do whatever you want. When I hiked to a waterfall and a black crow swooped by at the top, I knew it came with a message. So I have, I can show you a little altar next to my bed if I can spin this without breaking everything. Do, 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 do. This feather that's right here. Um, so in, that's a raven feather. So another story from the canyon, as canyons do, they lead the stories. I gotta adjust this. I'm getting sweaty in here. Um, uh, there, there is a spot. It's called the patio. And if you haven't seen my video from the Grand Canyon, it's really beautiful. It's just like good stuff to watch, relax you. Um, but this one specific location had there was a death that was there, and there's a book called Death at the Grand Canyon that's updated every year. Fascinating. If you want to learn about people dying in the Grand Canyon. It happens a lot because it's kind of a dangerous place and people go there and they get overheated and they don't drink water, blah, 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 blah. So someone had fallen into this area that was considered uh, very sacred to the Paiute uh, nation here in the desert southwest. And uh, he, he fell about 65 feet and ended up dying and they had a hard time finding his body. So his body was in there for a couple of days and they got it and they got it out. And I was visiting there um, only like two to three weeks after this occurrence. And this was one spot where I was marooned, or we called it a spa day. It was just too hot between 10 and 3, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So we couldn't really hike. So we're like, let's hang out by this one spot where there's flowing water and there's lots of shade. Um, so we're hanging out there, and I just keep getting all these messages that are, you know, they're dark and not necessarily negative. And I just saw this kind of like body in the water, like being stuck against a rock in a waterfall. And so I throughout my life i've confronted death death you know my my grandfather apparently died like not apparently he died like a few days before i was born and my mother talked to me in utero and said can you wait until after frank dies and then come back frank my middle name thank you frank for being my dad's father james my other grandfather that's where my name comes from but uh death you know it happens and these issues have always been very pressing to me they always like, kind of find me and so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, okay, well, 
you know, what do I call in? Who do I talk to? Uh, you know, how old are these stones? What have they seen? You're just kind of scanning the environment, sending clearing, loving energy, because that rafting trip that came up the river with him from the river to this space, that couldn't have been easy, right? Or the family, uh, you know, uh, they had these fears and then they, they actualized. But this human being, it, it was his perfect time. He said goodbye and what a beautiful place to go. Um, he was sucked into that void. Oh my. Um, but I was like, I think that I did something. I at least arranged for specific energies to show up and I used my body, which is a physical force, which is a physical force, motherfucker. No, um, which is a physical force to draw in whatever wanted to be there. Uh, it's the power of prayer. It's the power of intention. Who knows? Maybe I was the first one. Maybe I was the thousandth person. Doesn't matter. It's important to me. And so I leave the space and I'm walking back to the campsite and on the ground, I see a raven fly over and on the ground is a feather. And I was like, hell yeah. So I grabbed it and I ran back and I folded it up in my map to protect it. Um, and I brought it home with me. But the next morning I had a little bit more time to spend at this space. And I had my hat, you may have seen it before in my hiking videos, it has a little goat on it. Um, I took my hat off and I was laying by the water and this huge gust of wind pulled my hat down the drainage uh, into this place and I could not, I ran after it, I could not catch it. And I'm pretty sure it's probably stuck right where that guy got stuck. <laughs> Cause it never came down the waterfall on the other side, like a few miles down, I had people looking for it. Um, just kind of an interesting story, you know, death is part of life, um, kind of essential part of life. And whatever I do while I'm here, I, I want to live you know, and if there's fear, I'll acknowledge it, but I'm still going to do what I need to do. I'm still going to go do the things that I enjoy and I'll be careful because I don't want to get hurt and I don't want to waste this vessel. I'm not being reckless, but I'm going to push the edge because that's where life is. It's, it's on the edge of things. It's right on that comfort zone line into the uncomfortable. <laughs> thank you for listening to the story and thank you for watching my video. Um, Again, I'm going to share a couple of links here. Feel free to follow them. Check out what I'm sharing. Uh, follow me here. I have a blog, astrologywithjames.com. Uh, if you follow me there, you'll get emails when I write something. And perhaps it will have some sort of message for you or influence your day. I don't know. Or you just like pretty writing. But it's been nice uh, speaking to you. And uh, I thank you all for being here. And I look forward to engaging with you more very soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye, friends. Prayers to you and your family and your human family and your animals and everyone you know. Be kind to each other. Take space when you need it. Bye, kids. <laughs>